Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to something a little bit different. If you're new to the channel you might be a bit baffled, if you're an old hand you'll understand exactly what's going on here. There's a major democratic exercise coming up on November the 5th and we at Guilecast don't believe in allowing nations to decide their own outcome of their elections. No, 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 that's terribly passe. What we do is using a random number generator we assign particular teams or particular parties or candidates to a particular team and then we allow those teams to battle it out in a game of SOPCOM and that determines the outcome of the election. Sounds stupid, I hear you say. Well, perhaps, except we have a 100% success rate using this tried and tested method. We have called it right six times. That's a one in 64 chance if you were flipping a coin either way. And I know what you're saying. Well, you could just go you know, go with the polls. But 33% of the time on those occasions, both Brexit in 2016 and Trump's first time round in 2016, that bucked the trend of what the polls were saying. We are officially more accurate than the polls. So I bet you want to know who's going to win on November the 5th, right here, right now. Don't worry, I've got you covered. Let's go over to our trusty random number generator. We're using a spinner this time round because it's more glam. What do you think? Could do with some tinsel, perhaps. Uh, so, we give this a spin. If it lands on an even number, this will be dictating who Team 1 are representing. If it lands on an even number, Team 1 will be fighting for the Democrats and Harris. Why? Because left-wing parties are more concerned with making things even. That's our logic. And if it's an odd number, Republicans, Trump, they're on the right. They're more concerned with individualism, typically. So, Team 1 would, in that instance, be representing... The Republicans and Trump. So we give it a spin. Spinny, spinny, ginny, winny. Give it a really good spin. Team one will be fighting for Trump. Dun, dun, dun. And it's going down on a generator map. I'm ready. You guys are ready. And the players are sure as hell ready. So let's go on over to the game zone and see how they're going to get on. Cheng. ka -ching. We'll go over our map in just a second, give us a little intro, but first of all, let's give them some time, allow them to gate in while we make our all-important introductions. This will be Team 1, or as we will come to know it now, Team Trump, up at the top of the screen. And this, of course, will be Team 2, or Harris and the Dems at the bottom. So, going first for Team 1 in the top left-hand corner of your screen, in a regal purple, going cyber and bless him, it's Ilu. Going first land. Team member number two in Cyanide Cyan, just to his right. It's Botany going Aeon. Botany Bay. Botany Bay. Oh, no. No Googling. If you can tell me what film that's from, you can be friends. What do I win, Guy? Well, you win a barrel full of respect from me. But no Googling, please. I don't want any charlatans in my feed pretending they know more about classic film history than they actually do. Anyway, going Aeon opening first land in Cyanide Cyan. Team member number three for Team Trump in Burgundy Red going UEF. How terribly sensible. It's Sonophibis. And he's gone first land. Team member number four going Spetsnaz Green. How uh, very accurate for Trump. Fan of the Russians, or so we hear. Uh, it's Surrey, God's own county. The finest of the home counties and indeed any county. Uh, there he is, going Seraphim, our first of the day, opening first land. And last but not least, over here in Fecal Brown, we have Dragon Slayer. Going Cyber and Bless him, opening first land, second air. So, two Cyber and a UEF, an Aeon and a Seraphim for Team Trump up at the top. Checking out Team 2 now in Ferrari Red to begin with the bottom left-hand side of the screen. We have Hooligan Gaber. He's going first land, going UEF, I didn't already say that. In Pontiff White for Team Member number 2. It's Barg6516, going Cybrin as well. Another Cybrin just over here to the right. It's Hyper2001 in Combat Green, going first land, second air. In Breast Cancer Awareness Pink, just the sort of thing, I'm sure, the sort of cause I can imagine Harris championing, championing got there in the end, uh, going Seraphim. It is Macho Man Randy Savage wearing pink. I can totally see that. Uh, he's stomping his way out. He's gone to first land. And in baby pink, just over here, we have Waketha, another Cyber. Lots of Cybrins today, it feels like. Going first, second land, going third air. So, looks like uh, three Cybrins, a Seraphim, and a UEF there for Team 2. It's a custom 5v5, if I hadn't said that already. Probably aware of that by now, though. And... Uh, it's basically 
an average Joe's. We do have two pros in the mix. Waketha at 1500 over on the right flank and Dragon Slayer mirroring him also up at the top of the screen. So they're going to be facing off against each other. It's nicely balanced. Lowest rated player today is on the other side, Ilu at a mere 1000 and Hooligan Gamer on Team Harris down there at the bottom left hand corner. Pushing out though already. You can see Com surging forward with a couple of labs. Yeah, a couple of mech marines. Also a striker in there. So making a good push up that left hand side to kick the game off looking aggressive for a joe but it's what we like to see uh, and everybody else is in between but not in between by much so we've got a couple of 1200s uh, oh and another 1100 in randy savage sorry uh so and then we've got a 1100 for botany 1300 for so uh, surrey and sonophibus at 1400 the game quality is at 92 percent and there is a slight advantage in overall averages for Team Trump. 1260 versus 1220. Perhaps that will represent the incumbent's penalty there. I mean, I know she's not the incumbent, but technically she is. She's got all of that baggage left over from Biden. So that is the way it is. But let's face it, 92%. That's pretty standard here. So it's a on paper, it is a balanced game as far as we are concerned. What has ye old map generator generated for our political exercise today. Uh, it is a decent amount of mass poop in there, actually. We've got some good piles there. 825, sort of 8, 900, around 1,000 there. Is that a, a stone field? It is a stone field. Often when you see those higher tokens, you expect them to be wreck fields. But no, those are stony, stony rockness. And then some uh, mass to be had around a sort of circular motion here with a little voided basin. Uh, we do have, wow, I was just about to say, we do have a pond over here on the right-hand side. Both of these guys actually looking to get a naval yard up, but Dragon Slayer completed his and got a sub out to cancel the work that Waketha was doing, and he was actually a ways off completion there. You can see it's still in the red, slowly deteriorating due to those torpedoes from that sub. Waketha says, no, thank you very much. I'm going to come up and reclaim that. I'll absorb the torpedoes. You can see with that 18 hit point a second regen, he's almost tanking that torpedo fire, but he's going to successfully kill it off. Oh, that second sub gets completed just in time. So there are now two subs in play here, so they'll be able to inflict a little bit more damage. Will Dragon Slayer persist and try to re-erect another naval yard? We'll have to check back in with that in just a moment early eco 37k a tick uh, in terms of total mass or 37k a piece 38k a piece in terms of total mass accrued and it's 178 to 169 well it's actually very very close team totals now between these two teams barely anything in it well, not even worth mentioning up to about 180 a piece in that kind of general area we're getting some upgrades on the way and it's one of our proper joeyest of the joes it's ilu our thousand rated player is going to kick things off on that front with a gun upgrade i don't think we've had any going on before that no looks like it he's the first one he's going for an aggressive rambo style entry with his commander exactly the sort of image he'd want trump to project i'm sure loves to look like a strong man do you just wish he would I know I know it's been done a lot and I'm not the first or even the five millionth person to say it but I just wish somebody would tell him it's not orange man bad it's not orange man bad but someone needs to tell him that the orange doesn't look good <laughs> because it doesn't go to the hairline I'm not a beautician as many of you will know but it doesn't go there's always a gap it's like a clumsily applied face mask put on by a toddler it's just not ideal anyway back to the game dragon slayer indeed was attempting to reassert control over the naval yard and i think he's going to do it the naval area over here you think he's going to do it he's going to get a second naval yard in play a torpedo launch in play. he's going to go for a third one now oh wow so i don't know what happened to the two submarines down here but they were not in play long and they didn't manage to prevent Waketha from getting another naval yard up and running in fact it's him now with an operational sub however that ran straight into that scuffle and it didn't last too long either 
things really kicking off here. We've got an upgrade on the way for Surrey. That's also going to be a gun upgrade. Team Trump looking a little bit aggressive here. Another gun upgrade as well coming in for Botany. 35% done there. We've got any upgrades at all coming from the Democrats? Probably not. They don't really believe in upgrading. <laughs> the jibes are real. There's going to be a lot of jibes. I intend to throw as much shade at both sides as possible throughout this process. If it offends you, um, you better just get used to being offended, I guess. And a repair upgrade. Wasting no time. Sorry, completes one and gets straight on to the second. 12% done there and climbing. We see facing off against down here. Randy Savage, who has gotten himself a T2 upgrade and he's securing the area with some point defense. Looks like he's going for four emplacements right off the hoof. Probably work on some shielding. That's a nice gap there. We didn't really talk much about the topography. We didn't really get a chance. Everything kicked off pretty sharpish. So we mentioned the pond over here. There's this lovely peculiar snaking s-shaped uh well i suppose splatted butterfly actually rather than an s-shape but uh you could make a sort of s-shape as you wade, wade your will angle your way through those mountainous passes but this lovely plateau butterfly shaped plateau through here which of course surrey and randy savage are now going to be tussling over and then this larger more open basin to the west which uh, will probably feature four comms maybe five fighting over rather vigorously i think probably four you're going to get two over here maybe ah well yeah. we've got this uh position down at the bottom where is hyper hyper has brought his com over to the middle yes yeah, so it's probably going to be a bit of six-way com action over in the west a 1v1 on the plateau and then a bit of 1v1 pro level fighting around the pond and then it's all pretty flat and open at each end of the territory where the main bases are located gun upgrade completes for hooligan gamer that's his first upgrade it's also air dropping in a ton of build capacity but look at this lovely little push now on the left hand side by ilu however there are some units of t1 pd guarding this approach and most of this seems to be Mantis spam, so these are going to suffer horribly against those point defences. Not many units will get through compared to how many launched that assault. Only it had a few more Medusas in there. Could have taken those down first and then advanced. Another little push came through here right past Hooligan Gamers Com, but didn't last very long. Still, we do have a moderately successful run by on the west from Illu. Now Mex is feeling the pinch. Will he get this one or is he just going to strafe out of range? Oh, it survives with eight hit points. Absolutely crushing. Now they push deeper into the backfield. Another unit of point defense. I don't think these are going to get too far now. Mostly partially damaged. No Medusas in play, as we've said. Tries to steer away and conserve what units he has left, but he's going to run into pursuing Mantis there from Barg. And that will be the end of that little push. Still, nice to see our 1,000 rated player putting the kibosh on their opponent's plans with some aggression. I'm sure some of you out there are saying, Guile, why didn't you choose a more high-level, pro-rated game for such an important election? Well, twofold. First of all, I'm constrained by the replays that people send in. And second of all, I thought it's something poetic about having people with no idea how to manage an economy represent people who have no idea how to manage an economy. Uh, so that is why we've got who we've got today shield upgrade on the way for botany and that is his fourth upgrade he's got three gun upgrades in play now full-on aeon sniper com and now he's going to get that extra hit point buffer that's going to be a nasty weapon and who's going to feel 
the full force of it. Well, it could be Barg, who's taken some damage already. He's got a, uh, a gun upgrade on board, but he is down to around 6,600 hit points after whatever recent encounter he found himself caught up in. Hyper back here with no upgrades as yet. How's Hudegun doing? So he's got nano repair and gun upgrade. 50 hit point a second regen on that chunky UEF chassis. Where are we on eco things now? Well, so it looks like the Dems are ahead. 430 to 390. Who is making up the lion's share of that? I wonder. Well, Ketha, unsurprisingly, pulling in the most of that. Down in the bottom right-hand corner, 134. That is chip leader as far as the game is concerned. And the only other person in the hundreds... Or, sorry... We do have 132 as well for Dragon Slayer, but the only other person in the hundreds is another Team 2 player. That is Hyper down here at the bottom of the screen, pulling in 109. And then we've got a couple of 80 odds, 85, 80-ish, and a 50 for Hooligan Gamer. Whereas we've got a 60 and a 50 in Botany and Illu. So Team Trump falling a little bit behind here. Is this capitalist rhetoric we've heard so much about? Your well, eco is lacking. Nice tack missile strike there. Takes out a T2 mech that was assisting multiple T2 factories. There goes another core mass. Where is the launcher for that? There it is. It's Randy Savage. Being very Randy and Savage indeed. <laughs> she just meant to say Savage there, but brain fixated on the wrong thing. And a repair upgrade on the way for Illu. Has stealth, has gun. These guys all just tooling up for the big fight here. By the way, I should say, I probably should have mentioned this earlier, uh, there will be some fruity language in this from the players is the way of things, I'm afraid. I don't mean fruity in the old-fashioned kind of man-loving man way. Uh, that would be fine. It's more of a new new sort of man-hating on man way with lots of abusive language. Again, I thought it fitting. I could have actually turned off chat, but I thought it fitting to have lots of animosity for this particular out. I know some of you get a good kick out of it, but I just mention it because I know also there's one or two of you out there that would like to watch with kids, and if you're too at all concerned about what's coming up, that's just something to be aware of. Tell them not to look at chat. Of course, now I've mentioned it, they undoubtedly will, so sorry about that. So as things have moved on in the pond, now neither team has any naval representation here. Not very inclusive. Two dead naval yard wrecks. I'm surprised we've got an engineer right there. He used to get in here and hoover that mass up. I'm surprised he hasn't done so already. But at some point, Rukefa has lost his naval yard, or indeed has simply reclaimed it as he decided it wasn't going to get much done. But both of these guys are rocking Cybrins. So you couldn't see a, uh, a path through in this game where you could pump out a bunch of Salem's, use that to dominate the area, and then of course go naughty naughty walkie walkie all the way up or down to your opponent's main base. Perhaps that was the initial plan. Hooligan Gamer advancing forward with his commander. Blapping away with that gun. Oh, what's that? Tack missiles inbound towards Hyper, who's rooted to the spot. He's even getting pinged. <laughs> oh, my God. A lovely little snipe. And it's from our thousand rated player. Where is it's there? Lovely little tack missiles. I almost missed it. I almost missed it, guys. <laughs> it's Team Harris taking the first L in this campaign. Goodness gracious me. Which interview did that represent, I wonder? Or was it just deciding not to do Joe Rogan? 
But anyway, there goes Hypo. And Hypo was actually pulling in the second and most amount of eco. Of course, this is a full share, so somebody else has gained access to that. And it's Waketha, who have is the most competent and is now pulling in a whopping 323 mass per tick. That could be very difficult for Dragon Slayer to contain. So, while it's good to get a man off the board, it can have negative repercussions as we've seen so many times in this format. More attack missiles inbound from Ilu. What's he going after now? There's T2 Mexes down here. That is indeed what he's going after. Nice snipe there. Now Ilu under pressure here as there's a couple of bricks. Oh no, don't say after that amazing snipe. He's just been caught out by a handful of bricks. I think he has bros. Bros and girls. Oh man. Thanks for assistance team. I mean, look, you did great with the snipe, but... You should have caught that inbound threat and backed up, really. You can't be putting that on the rest of your teammates, I don't think. But still, the game is now leveled. It's a 4v4, and we're not even 20 minutes in. Players falling like flies right here at the start of this one. So many gaffes being played out in real time. Botney trying to shadow what's left of this little brick attack with his own harbingers and his commander. Sonophibis has inherited what's left of Ilu's infrastructure. Interesting they didn't give it over to Dragon Slayer, although that would be him handling both flanks, which would be a little bit of an ordeal. The extra eco might not be a bad thing. Facing off against Wekha, who, Wekha, who's now pulling in 428 mass per tick. And Dragon Slayer pulling in a mere 206 at the moment. Not ideal. Not ideal in the slightest. Hudibun Gamer with a nice little advance here. He's got himself some mobile para shields to cover his comms approach that's a little bit of flak as well we probably wouldn't hurt him to do with a little bit more assistance here we've got harbingers nearby he hasn't got any t3 of his own and they do seem to be converging on his position oh man don't see don't say we're gonna have another com killed off to t3 assault bots Oh my god, don't stop. Why are you stopping, sir? Well, he's cooked. The Harbingers have caught him. And he knows it. Boom, baby! Why he stopped moving? <laughs> I think somebody's upset. Just, if your kids are watching, just hold your hand over that portion of the screen. I mean, yes, it's annoying, but the Harbingers are quicker than the Commanders. I think your Commander would have just died down here, most likely. Yeah, there are a couple of bricks kicking around, whatever, but you weren't getting out of that, really. He was only stationary for a moment. Oh, a little bit of a mercy strike here on Barg. Taking him down to 7,500 hit points. Oh my god, and the Harbingers are right there as well. Team Harris, what are you doing? You're throwing the game away, that's what you're doing. Down goes Barg. So now, it is a 2v4. Team Harris in dire straits right now. It is all up to Wakefa and Randy Savage. 
And if Team Trump have any sense, they will push hard right now. I'd say over on this left flank, they do have some Harbingers who are continuing to move forward after that latest attack. Down go some mass extractors. Look at this. Wakefa now sitting essentially on four bases at this point. And he's pulling in nearly 900 mass per tick. It is really going to be up to him to, I don't know, rush some experimentals or something. Maybe switch up and go mass air. How are we doing on the air front? We've seen very little of the air, or rather I focus very little on the air. We've got a decent contingent of ASFs over here on the left-hand side for Wakefa. But also a decent amount in the center for Sonophibis. Let's just have a quick tally, shall we? On numbers 43 Gemini ASFs for Wakefa. Oh, he needs to get his power grid sorted. He is power locked like crazy. Not necessarily his fault, of course, having inherited all of his teammates' bases. And Sonophibis pulling in. Oh, pulling in. <laughs> Stop pulling in. Produced 31 ASFs. Looks like 31 wasps. So, Team Trump a little bit behind on air power. Is he still going on about it? Who came as very upset? I honestly, that was probably a misclick. But even if it wasn't, it wouldn't it wouldn't have saved him. I would put money on it. They were very, very close at which point. I mean, it was literally, it was a few seconds where he stopped moving. He was not going to get out of trouble. Alumnar. Ready to airlift more Harbingers into the fight. I don't think these are going to get any deeper in. We've got bricks converging on them from multiple directions now. actually amazed at how static the front has been over on the right hand side between the two pros. They're both giving each other a lot of respect. Giving each other as much of a, a wide berth as possible. Crab almost complete. And not before time because would you look at that. Bricks and Wagner's Moving in, taking down a couple of torpedo launchers that were protecting the coastline here. Oh, hello. And a monkey lord. Is this some kind of methane lake? Why is it so opaque? Or unopaque? Which is the one? Is it opaque or... No, opaque is means you can't see through, right? Translucent would be the thing you can see through. English language failing me today. What I've got in my head is the... Opacity slider on Photoshop. <laughs> it's like, which is it more or less opaque? I don't know. Answers in the comment section below. And while you're down there, smash the old like button, would you? It does wonders for both the algorithm and my self confidence. Who knows that could do with a boost? Middle age spread advancing at the rate it is. Oh, terrorizing this bottom left-hand corner. Whose base was that? It was Hooligan Gamer in the bottom left-hand corner, wasn't it? Finally, a little bit of pushback. And interestingly, he didn't uh, bring that Monkey Lord out. He must have clocked the crab and thought, I'm going to lose that fight. So in the end, all that was really gained there was the destruction of a couple of torpedo launchers. Still, no bad thing. Oh, is that a harms? That is a harms. Valuable addition to coastal defense. Are we getting any pushback from the Democrats over in the West? Just a smidge. Some bricks lining up to defend. They're not going on the attack. Another set of harms, uh, harbs coming in, but they are not going to be able to break through this brick wall. Of course, it would be better for Kether if he could line them up in that direction. Some broadswords will help, though. 
temporarily of course till the inevitable aerial response but we do have a large escort detail coming in how is this going to work out it looked like Wakefa and the Dems had the aerial advantage early on and it doesn't look like that situation has changed I think they still do the engage was relatively even but as a result probably going to be a numbers game and that's going to be a win for team Harris should allow those bricks to hold out maybe although the broadswords have done some damage here the number of bricks has fallen dramatically but the bricks are stronger than the harbingers oh and a couple of Percy's coming in as well for good measure why not solid defense there from the Dems look at this and if Thota out from Randy Savage and that could be the end of this little firebase here it's a shame for Team Trump because it's got some nice artillery positions but as long as Randy doesn't second guess himself should be able to break through here and see Surrey desperately trying to scramble back with his forces that were moving in at the time to assist Dragon Slayer on this right hand side but now has to contain this situation and make sure this push only results in the destruction of this forward base and nothing further in I think he's going to be alright though well, so the Athota's down to about 44k. We have got a broadsword or two coming in also. That's a fresh Athota, but we've got lightning tanks and siege tanks moving in to assist. So that could be an augmenting factor in the encounter. Harbs over here, meanwhile, in the west, pushing towards this canyon, which leads directly into Randy Savage's beefed up mass extractors over here equipped with mass fabricators and the like the photo is dealt with I think it's going to be one for one on that front the problem's still going to persist siege tanks need to focus it down They're firing on everything else it seems but the Athota, there's the attack command Dota down to 10,000 hit points and falling. Now, it might be quite even in the end of it, though. It doesn't look like Randy Savage is going to have many forces left at the end of this encounter. Wow, it's still alive. 200 hit points. And there it goes. Did just enough to kill off that attack, though. So the base got wiped, but no further damage will be inflicted. The crab did come out of here with a big old brick attack, but two monkey lords, along with defending forces, defending bricks and the like, held this coastline. Lots and lots of mass to be had now right on Dragon Slayer's doorstep, and that will be very gratefully received. I'm sure after the amount of extra income that is now being funneled into Waketha's coffers with all the extra bases he's sitting on, major air production facilities down there at the bottom of the screen looks like it's brick production and the occasional megalith that's being worked on in the far west or in the far left as we should be saying for team harris lol K Master Surrey from Dragon Slayer. What's Surrey building? Getting a T3 upgrade, working on another Ithota. Already pushing out now with one as we speak, however, pushing back across the plateau. Not quite the same level of base infrastructure on the other side of this little threshold here, but still plenty of units that that Ithota could kill off. The question is. We'll be strolling straight into enemy air control. And we are starting to see some whaler gunships being produced. Or maybe it's just that one. 
interested. No, we've got a couple kicking around. We have a nice little group over here. It's about nine in total for Wakefa. Eco-wise, Team Harris is now up by two to three hundred mass. 1.6k to 1.7k versus 1.4. Pulling in those taxes. Will be all of that. Uh, they call it unrealized gains that they're planning to tax at some point. God, won't that be a disaster? <laughs> Discuss that in the comments. No flame wars, please. I understand that there will be a divergence of political opinion in the comments, but do be nice to each other. We're all here in service of a passionate fandom in RTS. Bricks emerging from the lake on the north side. Run straight into a monkey lord. There's also a megalith under shield coverage just over here. Those bricks not going to get an awful lot done. Oh my god. You're going to you're gonna take that, dude? Dude. Just pinched your girlfriend's butt. He's literally just... Monkey Lord just doesn't want to defend himself against that one. Look at that. That brick is Jack Reacher. <laughs> it's actually running away. Why? Why? Explain to me what's going on there, people. I want to understand it. That's <laughs> quite the strangest thing ever. Megalith out west. Struggling to get firing solutions on some of these units as they move around the other edge of this, uh, or other side of this hillock. Ooh. Is that base to base artillery? It looks like it. Where's that coming from? There it is. A disruptor from Waketha. I was wondering how long it was going to take to start seeing some base to base artillery emerge. We have a lot of income here for Waketha. He is pulling in 1.6k. Randy Savage on just 372. Blaketha, of course, as we've said, on four bases. Don't be surprised if we start to see some game enders emerge. Has got to cover the entirety of the western flank all by his lonesome, though. Can't go too mad. Checking in on the central canyon. Looks like an Ithota's about to lose to this GC. GC moving too early. No, stop just in time. Gets himself a nice little rank of veteracy. Can't wait around though. Got to get on the move. That Iron Storm is about to proc. There it goes. Harbingers are going to fall foul of that. Still the GC is through. It's got some 31,000 hit points left on the clock. However, Randy Savage completes a brand new photo. Which is going to loiter at the edge of shield coverage. Just tickle away at the GC which is now in the red. GC going to try and withdraw. Looks like it. Going straight into an Iron Storm, but that's surely about to run out. Nope! <laughs> Iron Storm had that last laugh, it would seem. But look at this push over in the west! Trump on the move! Must be porn stars and hookers down here. <laughs> Onwards they go. That is savagery. Waketha, having only recently completed an artillery piece and a nice bit of shielding, some P gens, and suddenly a solid push down that right hand side. And now a big old air battle kicking off over here, which looks like Team Trump could win, maybe. Harris pulls out, presents. The backside, never a good way around to do things. I don't know, still a little even. A couple of strap bombers coming in now. The Sonophibis trying to keep any damage they can onto the Monkey Lord, which is engaging the Megalith, but a ton of whalers show up and finish off the crab. However, the air battle, I think, has been won by Team Trump. 
but only just. Not an awful lot of air superiority fighters left, and they're struggling with the flak coming off those gunships. Yet more fighters inbound, this time from Surrey, however. Losing all these gunships would be a sorry state of affairs for Waketha. Wow, lovely little push. And a base-to-base -base threat dealt with, however. That is a lot of reclaim sitting down there now. Some 110, 120k. Mass just waiting to be scooped. Build back better. Could be real for Team Harris. Botney. Loitering. What have we got over here? Scathis in production at the top left hand side of the screen. Sonophibis looking to repay. The Dems for that artillery affront. And look at this. Support commander straight out to rebuild the disruptor. Was that where it was before? Did they kill off the wreck? They must have done because that would be further along if it was just going straight back down on top. We have got a couple of wrecks left, of course, for the ion reactors. So much mass to be had there, though. Three monkey lords pushing up past the lake. Is that Athota? There's the Athota coming up out of the canyon from Randy Savage. That could be a target. Interesting place for a strategic missile defense. Haven't seen a nuke yet. 38 minutes into this game. Monkey Lord from Sonophibis coming in behind that Ithota. Just wants to get in range. Can't quite manage it. Just to fire that laser and shut this down. But at the moment, Ithota just too far ahead. Oh, going to take some fire from the cliff, though. And now he stops. That's a critical error. Managed to take down the S&D, but the Iron Storm probably will, I imagine. There he goes. Oh, wow, getting lucky here. Surely, surely it's not going to survive. 500 hit points left. Getting a lot of assistance from engineers, but eventually it does get taken out. One Monkey Lord versus two crabs. That's going to be difficult to contain. And if they break through here, what have we got? We've got one more Monkey Lord further over. Everything at the moment for Sonophibis is going into this Scathis. So he's a little light on the ground. The question is, does Waketha realize the opportunity? the moment, it looks like he's consolidating his forces, doesn't realise what he's potentially got. I'll have to just check on air power once again. So we've got 19 fighters for Sonophibis. Waketha... He's got a bunch of gunships still. 58. Where's his ASFs? Did he not start building those again after they got wiped? Oh, he's got some over here. He's only got 15 and two more which are bingo on fuel. Strategic launch detected. And there's a nuke. We were missing that sound. Straight out from Botany on this left-hand side. Being directed. It looks like it's going after this encroaching army on the plateau. And... Boom. Doesn't really bag the heart of the invading force though most of it managed to get ahead of that impact location isn't it though to 
lying in wait and guarding this approach. We've got tons of point defense queued up, but not a lot that's currently in situ. This little group of T1 PDs waiting to guard Surrey from an inbound telemaser threat, which of course is still live. Ketha still with a Cybrin commander, which could do the Cybrin chicanery at any point. Down goes the Ithota. Oh, it managed to get right up against the Disruptor. One that I hadn't noticed had been completed. And down goes the Disruptor. That's a lovely blow dealt by Randy Savage. And a wave of strats now. Are they coming for Surrey? certainly are. Surrey with 17,000 hit points under double shield coverage at the moment. He's got a bunch of Sams. Oh, gets clipped, but he's all right. R2, see what you can do back there. Gets under shield coverage further to the west. I think that's going to be okay, but that is very ominous. While the fighters are tied up on the bombers going after Surrey, the whalers are inbound on this position there is a disruptor but not far away is the commander do they realize the comm is there i'm not sure they've spotted him they're much more concerned about the disruptor lovely little chain reaction kills off everything in the area and now they've seen the comm and dragon slayer is not getting out of that boom and there goes trump's pro oh he actually controlled kate he knew he wasn't going to get out of that he wanted to maximize the damage on the gunships and to his credit, I think he got them all. All of those gunships died. That was a lot of mass tied up in those. Still, though, Sonophibus now. It is up to you, Sunshine, as far as Team Trump are concerned. Are we seeing the stage set for a spectacular Democrat comeback? That was a very serious blow that was just dealt to the Republicans. But Somophibus did manage to complete that scout this. The Megaliths never advanced forward. I think that was probably a mistake. A little bit of extra scouting might have revealed the vulnerability there. There's also a Scathis that's nearly complete down here, but it's unshielded. Support commanders desperately working to sort that out, but in come some of the impacts from the Republican Scathis. Team 1 dishing out the hurt here. I don't know if they managed to hold this. They did manage to kill off the Disruptor from Surrey. Ooh, another inbound Ithota. Surrey taking a lot of fire over the last few minutes. Nice defense with the Monkey Lord, however. The fact they haven't got that direct fire that punching power got this huge dispersal of the Scathis. Brutal though it is. So difficult to kill off specific individual high profile targets. But that is a difficult loss for Waketha. Half of his air production almost out west. But he has got his Scathis online. And look at the amount of shielding that's going up around it now. 100% focused on defending this, and why wouldn't you be? Whole new threat coming Trump's way. Boom! Now the attack command's been issued for those ground forces, and it's not going well. They left that too long. I swear they could have got in here and dealt with this Scathis. We have an air attack, but they might still manage it on the ground. Bricks moving on up. There are a ton of T2 PDs, but they're Cerberus turrets. We all know how terrible they are. Whalers out from Sonophibus trying to contain this brick threat. Air superiority fighters from both sides tangling overhead, but looks like it's going to go Team Trump's way. And as a result, the bricks will definitely be contained. And the Scathis, for the moment at least, will survive, although. 
currently receiving counter Scathis fire. And there goes all the shielding. Mostly there are shields to the east of it. All the power grid over to the west has gone. Gets another volley out, but there's another volley inbound. I think that's going to be the end of Team Trump Scathis. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. And what are they going after? They stopped targeting this heavily shielded Scathis and instead going after infrastructure in the bottom right. We do have a new disruptor up in play over in the east. Also heavily shielded now. Petty recriminations coming out from the Republican side. So much, uh, <laughs> so much animosity. Strategic launch detected. There goes the nuke from Botany. Oh, they managed to take out. Or was there even an SMD, or have they managed to kill off the SMD? It's coming straight for the Scathis. We'll know in a minute or two. Oh, that's a, that's a painful loss to a simple nuke. That's a scat this down on each side. Look at that. Very to and fro. Top left base eradicated. One of the bottom left bases, sort of one of the central bases. Eradicated to a nuke. And it's still anyone's game. Although, look at the difference in eco. Team Harris pulling in 2.3k. Team Trump pulling in 1.7. 3.7. as kind of accurate as well. I mean, I don't know, but I, I'm sure I've read somewhere that the Democrats are pulling in a lot more finance than the Republicans are. A lot more in donations. Let me know if I've got that right. You never know what you read these days, if you can believe it or not. Makes sense, though, with uh, Trump being more of the uh, anti-establishment figure. A bit of a monkey lord encounter over here. Ooh, that one's going to make it out of the make it out of the conflict with 2,500 hit points, tail on fire and everything. Carries on working its way around that hillock. That's perfectly executed defense from Wakefa. Oh, here we go. Wakefa starting teleport. It doesn't like the way it's going. Oh, wow. A monkey lord made it all the way down here. Must have taken a route like this. starting to queue up on this plateau now. Randy Savage looking a little bit vulnerable. Being hit up on the ground from multiple directions. <coughs> Look, we've even got a push out in the west from multiple directions. One GC determined to finish off that megalith. I think he's going to. Nicely done. Another one coming in from this position. What a Team Harris spending all of their eco on? Are they even spending it? Well, they seem to be. In terms of total mass accrued, they're up over half a million mass on their opponents. Reclaim-wise, it's really close in terms of reclaim. It's basically neck-neck, -neck, 364 apiece. Team 2 just overtaking now. Wow. Kill loss ratios. Team Trump have done way better. They have been much more clinical in their execution. 
to 0.36 in favor of Team Trump. <coughs> GC breaks through. Lots of hit points left on the clock on this one. Collateral damage from those strap bombers. Taking out half their own stuff. GC. Oh my god, fire the laser face already. So many reactors just waiting for a hosing. There we go. Suddenly, the west West Fold seems to be falling. Oh my god. The encroachment from every direction. Are we seeing the most spectacular of all batting collapses right now from the, the Harris campaign? Just don't seem to have the ground forces. Got a lot of support commanders, they've got a lot of income. But really struggling to keep up with these experimentals. And in these big games, you don't often see the experimentals really make major breakthroughs. But this has been a very leaky game in multiple directions. Experimentals reaching main bases, causing damage. Not often critical damage, but damage nonetheless. has both microwave laser and teleporter ready no doubt as a last ditch effort of course if he can just manage to pick off one or two comms get a snipe in there hit the person instead of the ear so to speak and maybe maybe they stand a chance of walking out with this one Just grabbed the last one with a quick tele snipe. So that's possibly what he's thinking of at this point. Please shield this, says Dragon Slayer. Fair enough. Brand new Scathis under construction. That's probably a fair comment from Beyond the Grave too long before the Dems have located that threat. That's where its situ situation is at the moment. You can see the build capacity crowded around it. Base-to-base -base artillery coming from the Dems, focusing in on Botany, but he has pretty comprehensive shielding, and it looks like he's launching another nuke just as we've zoomed in. Taking forever to fire. Strategic launch detected. There we go. Who's the lucky recipient? Looks like it's coming Randy Savage's way. Push back from a trio of crabs at the bottom right. Does this mean? No, it doesn't. Oh, wow. So, did that just launch twice? I think that cost him two anti nukes because the first one missed. And so it had to fire again, and then it circled round and then would have taken it out anyway. Brutal. Fortunately, though, it doesn't look like Team Trump is stacking nukes not due to be another one out for quite some time. But my, how the eco picture has changed. You can see a lot of redundant mexes, empty mexes on here after these repeated experimental attacks. And actually, Team Trump are now ahead as a result by about 200 mass per ticks, 1.7k to 1.5k in favor of Team Trump now. They're still down massively overall in terms of total eco. Total eco now standing at an advantage of about 700,000 mass. It's disgusting amounts. 
crazy amounts of mass. Wave of scout planes out from the Harris campaign. What are they looking for at this point? Perhaps more targets for the burgeoning disruptor array. But look out! Scathis is complete. He did put some shielding up after Dragon Slayer's suggestion, but didn't do an awful lot. Still looking relatively weakly covered. And now that these are falling in, you can bet that that disruptor is going to be training itself on the Scathis, I would imagine. Have they actually discovered it yet? No, they have not. Spy plane inbound to try and ascertain the location, but that's been shot down before discovering it. Here goes another one. Too many bouncers down here. Literally just got a rally command up in enemy territory and hoping that they discover something, but that's just too much comprehensive air cover. Big counter push underway on the ground, though. This could be it. This could be the attack that the lefties have been waiting for. What have we got on the ground in terms of defense? Tons of build capacity working on T2 PDs. Hard to see through the glare of the bloom, the sh Aeon Shield bloom. There's not a lot there, other than the PDs that are going up now. I haven't got GCs lying in wait or anything. Bricks might stand a chance here. We've also got a ground push formulating down here. And it does look like that disruptor has been trained on the Scathis. The Scathis has now been retasked to hit Randy Savage and that is decimating his entire base. Not that that's the right word, of course. Destroying far more than a tenth though. Wow. Defense is holding up pretty well. Couple of reactors going pop in that exchange, but nothing too devastating. Crab still sitting under the water here, letting some bricks go in first, but they're just going to get massacred by these experimentals that are lying in wait. Tons of T1PD going up. Now we're working on the second disruptor. We've actually got counter disruptor fire as well. Where's that coming from? Is that in the same place? No, it looks like it's coming from this position over here, perhaps from Surrey, maybe up at the back here. But a combined attack now from both Randy Savage and Waketha, recognizing the threat that Sonophibis represents in this top right hand corner. They really need to get that Scathis out of commission. Pushing their way through, they've amassed a decent amount of experimentals and they've killed off a decent amount as well. We've only got a couple of wrecks to show for it, but there were two crabs and a monkey lord protecting this area for Sonophibis. They're just gone. Now there's a ton of Team 2 experimentals surging towards the Scathis. Support commanders coming out along with bouncers. Trying to throw everything they've got at the inbound Ethotas. But the Ethota is in range. That's another Scathis I think is going to get taken out. Oh, man. <laughs> Life expectancy for Scathis in this game. Not looking too good. What have we got here? Well, Ketho using his teleporter not for a telesnipe, but instead going to the top right-hand corner and building arms. Interesting. Perhaps expecting, maybe, that an unsuspecting commander might wander in here, not knowing that these torpedo ambushing systems are there. 
and just get themselves killed. That'd be a wonderful strat if it works out. Don't think we've seen any commanders for Team Trump be placed in this pond as yet, but of course, Team 2 not to know that. that doesn't mean that they couldn't uh, decide to put one in there at any point. But look at this. Dragon Slayer's old base has been torn asunder by this experimental push from Team 2. Lovely bit of work. Have got bricks moving in to try and shut this down. But there's still a lot of hit points on board. These experimentals. Four Brotoads doing their level best to take some of these crabs down. But some of them might just meet with Surrey or reach the base over here. There is that extra piece of artillery. I'm working on an Alwasar also. And more artillery coming in from this position down south from Randy Savage. They're hanging on in there, the Democrats, as we pass one hour. Looked like it was going south for a while there. And now they're actually back in front in terms of eco. Team Trump down to 1.3k per tick now. Team Harris on 1.5. And they kill off this piece of artillery. This last megalith still in the green, or having only just gone into the yellow. Surely should be able to manage it. I don't know why the guns are trained over here on the fighters. But they are zooming in. Couple of shots will deal with it. There it goes. Also a train of bricks moving in. Surrey not yielding his position, wanting to keep his comm in the area to assist with experimental production, hoping that they can stem the tide of this attack. And it looks like they're going to do it with the help of these broadswords and a helpful Ethota coming in from the backfield. Very nicely done indeed. This game, absolutely to and fro. Arsewasher will clean up the game, says Dragon Slayer. We shall see. We shall see if it's even allowed to be completed. How is... The air superiority fighter situation. We've got 70 fighters for Sonophibus on Team Trump with another 10 which are bingo on fuel. Waketha has 33. So complete the arse washer. Oh, we've also got a ton over here for Surrey. Excuse me. Surrey with some 42. So massive aerial advantage right now for Team 1. allowing these gunships to go to work on these inbound experimentals shows you just how important air dominance slash air control is in this game. The number one ideal counter-attack against an experimental push. Assuming it doesn't come in tow with a ton of shielded T2 and T3 flak. Number one defense is a horde of gunships. If you have air dominance, put that to work. But now, an experimental bomber, possibly on its way to completion. Air dominance with that team. They can provoke an attack or provoke a response with their gunships. Come in, clean up what fighters Waketha does have and then go to work with the bomber. Not happy about the wreck thieving. Excessive taxation, that. <laughs> Republicans moving in to put a stop to it. Well, they're just going for the fight, the aerial fight now. Why not? They've got the advantage. And also dish out some pain with these gunships. There's another scout. Are you kidding me? about 80% done but I don't think it's going to make completion the broadswords have spotted it lurking overhead and now going after it shield capitulation is real there goes the artillery piece Wakefa teleported back over here after producing just one and a bit harms Oh, what's going on up here? Did he teleport as well? He hasn't got a teleporter. What's Randy Savage's comm doing all the way up over here? He must have airdropped his comm up there 
with these support commanders, maybe. Oh no, those support commanders belong to Akefa. And now he's going to get himself killed. What are you doing? I don't understand. I don't understand that play. We might potentially cover that at the end. I don't know. We'll see. That's insane. That's insane. Why was his com up there? All the way up here. Well, there he goes. Waketha. Now. Unburdened by what has been his teammates. <laughs> Can he turn this around all by himself? I wonder. Putting up a good fight over in the west. Bricks versus GCs, but there are a lot of GCs. GCs with their outrageous hoover hands. And that brick push, I think, is going to be shut down. Now we're getting on with the Awasar, there it is. Very nearly cooked. Almost done. That's wild. Answer in the comment section if you saw him go up there what that was about. Just bizarre. I don't know what. He must have followed up one of these recent attacks and had a plan. I don't know what the plan was, but... All the way up there at the top right-hand side of the screen... And a couple of bugs completed at the same time for this Awasar. I feel like we all know where this game is going. Even though Team Harris is... Look at this. Team Harris at 1.9k mass per tick. Team Trump at 1. Almost a 2 to 1 mass advantage for the Dems. But the offensive power is real. Look at that. Three bugs, in fact. And an Awasar going to town over here. Team 2 with no air power to speak of. Infrastructure about to be obliterated now by gunship and bomber pressure. That 1.9k soon to be a thing of the past, I think. Massive chain reaction taking out ion reactors and mass fabricators. Support commanders now in danger of going pop on mass. That'll be a lot of extra mass production also. Awasar does get shot down. Combined attack in the air and the ground as the GCs have carried on pushing forward, although finally get dealt with in the west. Still, this death ball of gunships goes on the rampage. The broadswords are very nearly done, however. There's a lot of Sams kicking around. Ketha's got a, done a good job of spamming air defense. Let's see what he's got left, admittedly. Well, that's just the Seraphim ones. Some 75 Sam sites left. At a guess. Without going into it too much. Oh, some more GCs did break through. Oh yeah, this is looking really, really bad right now for Team Harris. Waketha does have that tele-snipe capability, remember? Hasn't used it or attempted to use it yet. All he's done is gone up here and built a harms. Had some plan and then changed his mind on it. At the moment, Surrey is vulnerable if he can get a read on him. Of course, he doesn't have much of an air force, so scouting is going to be hard. Surrey's vulnerable. Sonophibus could be vulnerable if he exited here, away from this line of triads. And Botany is not so vulnerable. We have lots of point defense dotted around. He's kind of right in the middle of it. But look at that. Team 2 now down below 1k. He was up 1.9 a minute ago, but the complete obliteration of all of the Western infrastructure. We still have two operational GCs where they've seen better days down here in the bottom left-hand corner. 
One bug of full health there. Another one only on 10,000 hit points, but getting work done nonetheless. What a spectacular body collapse, but we've got another Scathis that was completed. Are you kidding me? Who's it going after? It's going after Sonophibis up here. Managed to build himself a single satellite at Novax heading over, presumably, towards the Scathis. Another group of gunships over here, however, and a bug. Just send one of these two to defend this coast and prevent these bricks from getting anything done on the outside. Snipe nuke defense, says Dragon Slayer from beyond the grave. We do, of course, still have a nuke launcher, I believe, for Botany. There it is. 126 kills so far, and it's actually already loaded. So he can fire at any time. There is the... Bug production facilities up at the top left hand corner of the screen. Yeah, this looks really bad for the Dems. I don't see how they get out of this one. All these defenses are aerial defenses, which will help against the bugs, but the GCs could potentially take them out. We have got a crab lying in wait for them. Two rows of Sams that these gunships would like to avoid. Could of course come round here across the bottom. We've got another line of flak protecting the Scathis. And so much mobile flak. That's unreal. Did you see that? wave of spy planes came in and just got annihilated I think at this point you could suicide all this take care of the Scathis and Waketha's just done which it looks like might be what he's planning maybe he's just coming in here after these resourcing options probably take down some on the way past Lots of shadowing by all these bouncers. Let's see how these gunships hold up. Broadswords tumbling out of the sky. Soul Ripper down. Still three remaining. Last of the broadswords about to fall as well, but they've reached the shield. Shields won't last long. Down goes yet two more bugs. One remaining. Hit points plummeting. Just needs to deal with this final shield. Oh my goodness, doesn't manage it, but does he take out the SMD? No, he lands on it. However, the shield has taken out. The Novak satellite still survives, of course, overhead. And it's focusing on taking down the SMD. He's done it. They just need to fire a missile, and that's taken care of. And he's doing just that. Strategic launch detected. Lovely bit of teamwork Strategic here. Strategic launch detected from the Trumpers. And I don't see any way that Scathis survives. Unless I've missed an SMD somewhere and so have they. Another bug up here alive. This will take care of a lot of support commanders as well. Chopping that 885 income down even further. Boom! Down to 550 mass per tick now. Down goes the Scathis also. And look at the diminishment of Team Harris. Waketha cornered and mostly just controlling mobile T3 anti-air. We have this little brick formation underwater just over here, but... To all intents and purposes. What he says now, surrender. <laughs> Toxic. There's been an awful lot of petty recriminations, like I say, ideal for this game. Some people will hate it. I do not. And here comes the tele snipe attempt. We knew it was coming. There's nothing left of his base to do anything else. The question is, what's he going after? 
Surrey is over here, but he's... Oh, he, maybe he is the target. There's the exit. Surrey potentially the target. Do we have... Oh, yeah, we've got a massive... No, I thought it was a bank of T1. I'm going to put your... Sorry, I saw cast his botany. Well, it did end up on my desk. But there's Wukether. Is he going after? Is he just trying to destroy things generally? Did he realise he was so close to Surrey? Not sure he did. He's not moving in that comms direction. Maybe trying to telly. Yes, I think he probably is. Pew, pew. And there's a wave of T1 bombers and a gunship. And the inevitable capitulation. Nice bit of well played. There we go. Sonophibus demonstrating some good manners. That was a huge game. That was crazy. Absolutely crazy. We had all of that madness going on early doors. Uh, down here. Lots of comms going out early, but then a long drawn out. It was a 1 hour and 15 game. Lots of toing and th throwing, but a Team Trump victory. Four more years of Trump, it looks like. Great for capitalism. Pretty good for Israel. Not so good for Ukraine. Commiserations, guys. Um, yeah. <laughs> and everybody else in Europe. <laughs> but it is what it is. Um, let's go back. I want to see what on earth Randy Savage was doing. So let's just tack back to that position and see what on earth he, why he materialized in that top right-hand corner. So here we rejoin the game at one hour, three minutes and 27 seconds. And essentially, I've got it on uh, plus four at the moment, but what's happened has, is Waketha has teleported up here he built some harms, or a harms, and then promptly teleported back. But also at the same time, whilst that was uh, underway, we had a big old attack from Team Harris coming up the right-hand side. You can see all these dead crabs. The base up here, formerly belonging to Dragon Slayer, was essentially wiped. But whilst all that was going on, whilst we had this push going on up here, there was this move from Randy Savage on foot. He first moved to the pond down here and assisted with the upgrades. Uh, we had the teleportation upgrade already in place from Waketha, but he swapped out. I'm not sure what it was. It was probably Nano Repair or something. Uh, oh, no, it wouldn't have been. It would have been... Oh, no, maybe, yeah, maybe. It was. Uh, he swapped out whatever he had for a T3 upgrade to help build the Hans, and Randy Savage actually assisted with that down there in the bottom right-hand corner. And then he just strolled up this right-hand side, and you can see he's still moving up there. All I can think is that this was a misclick. We did, however, have two SCUs who moved up this way in the direction of Waketha while he was there. Presumably, maybe the idea was to move up here and start building a base with this ground push that was pretty successful, but... I don't understand why you'd bring your comm up there. All I can think is that this was a misclick. And of course, he gets spotted. Uh, and maybe even the better idea at this point would have just been to try and get underwater. But even then, we would have just had torpedo bombers come and take you out. But yeah, it was just bizarre. So that was a very, very bizarre decision by Randy. If you're watching, sir, no judgment. But I would love to know what the thinking was behind that. Was it a misclick? Was there a plan that just didn't work out? You found yourself in an awkward position. Do let us know in the comments section below. So, will we be proved right? Will this be lucky number seven? Is that, is that a lucky number? I feel like it is. I don't know. Will this be lucky number seven? Will we continue our move towards a, a, a or a continue our run of unbeaten... Uh, what's the word? Cephology. There we go. Unbeaten cephological predictions. Who knows? But uh, yeah, if it is right, <laughs> it's another four years of Trump. You might be celebrating. You might be miserable. Uh, congratulations or commiserations, whichever one favours you. Until next time, guys, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile signing out.